Now I'm going to pass back to Hag to describe some more other features of Git. So I'm just going to talk about <clears throat> two other useful features of Git that, that might come in handy when you're getting started. So the first of them is the Git ignore file. And then um, the other is setting your username and email. So if you create a .git ignore file um, at the top level of your Git repository, so inside the, the main directory of your Git repository, um, this is a, a really useful feature that allows you to essentially hide things from Git. So say you had um, some important secrets such as passwords or, or secret keys for your server um, and they lived inside some file or some folder inside your repository. You can just list um, the location of those things or you can list um, particular glob patterns, um, sort of regular expression patterns to tell Git to ignore them. Um, this might also be useful for things like data or output directories or places where you've got temporary or compiled files. So in this example, um, those of you that have worked with Python are probably used to seeing .pyc files. So these are bytecode um, compiled files that Python will compile on the fly and store on the file system. We don't want these in our Git repository because we only want the code in our Git repository. So if we put a star.pyc um, line in our .gitignore file, it will tell the Git repository to just ignore all of those. It, it won't tell us about those when we use Git status and we won't accidentally add them to the repository. Um, here we've got an app directory with a secrets.txt file where we might have some passwords or sensitive, sensitive information. Again, this will tell Git to ignore that. And then we can imagine that the temp underscore data is some kind of output directory where we're writing files. Um, it's perfectly acceptable to want to write files and an output inside the directory that is also a Git repository, but we don't want to end up committing terabytes of, of output data to our Git repository so we can just tell it to ignore it with that. Another thing that Git tends to prompt you to do when you, you first set things up is it, it gives you um, an option of setting a global username and global email address. Um, so Git stores information inside a, a, got, a, a dot .git directory within your repository, but it also can potentially store information inside your home directory in a, in a dot .git directory. So if you want all your Git repositories to know who you are so that when you make a commit message, um, so we talked earlier on about when you do a commit, the minus M option, that's telling, telling the repository, this is some information about the change I've made. If there's more than one person committing to the repository, it's really useful if we know who made those changes. So if you do git config dash dash global user.name, um, you can add your username in there and again you can add your email with git config dash dash global user dot email and give it your email address and once you've done this once on a, on a given system it will remember it for all your interactions with different git repositories so it's really useful to do this as a one-off and that makes sure that any commit messages are tagged with your information. <clears throat> 